Hey, how's it going? It's Lee Halliday, and what we'll be doing today is covering a cool package called SWR from the folks at Zite, the same ones that make uh, the Next.js um, framework, and same with the Zite Now serverless hosting platform. So SWR is a little package that basically gives you hooks for remote data fetching, as their subtitle implies, but it's based off of this RFC, uh, whatever, 5861, which is state while revalidate. And what that means is it will show you the cached version of your data if it has it. And then in the background, it will go and fetch the new version and it will replace that once it gets it. And it has a lot of nice built-in things like support for suspense. Um, it also has this cool little feature where if you sort of, if you click off on another tab and you come back, it detects when you come back and it can refresh the data. It also has some polling so you can get it to refresh sort of every five, 10 seconds or whatever. So this is what we'll be covering today. Anytime you're working with data, you need an API to pull it from. And we'll be using this cool little um, API from the UK police that returns you an array of crimes based on a latitude and longitude. So what the data looks like, each crime has a category, so antisocial behavior, drugs or whatever, has a location of where it took place, and you can query this based on a location and a month. So you can get all the crimes near a location in, in October, for example. So we've got this Create React app, which is doing nothing but rendering some text that says SWR right now. So if I go over to this, let me clear this out again. There we go. So I've only installed one single package called SWR, and we'll be using a hook that it provides and a little bit later, this way to sort of globally configure how it works. So if we get started, we'll say const data comma error equals use SWR. So the first thing you pass to this hook, um, it says a key or a key interface, and that's because it, it's a very flexible library. Um, you could be passing it a, a path or a URL, you could be passing it a GraphQL query, um, an object, sort of, it's up to you sort of how it's implemented. But what we'll be passing is the URL to pull down this crime data. So we'll paste that in here. And maybe to clean this up, we'll put this into a, in a, into a variable. So URL like that. Cool. And the next thing you need to pass it is um, a fetcher. So if we come back to the API and we go down to their example, you see her fetch. And it says, fetch function. Um, fetch is a function which is any asynchronous function which returns data. So it's a little bit vague, right? And this tripped me up a little bit because I thought fetch was just the, the fetch, the, the uh, tool that comes sort of in the browser now for you to fetch, get requests, post requests, data, etc. And it was returning me some weird stuff. Actually, I'll let you see what it's doing. So if we look at console data, um, we can actually look at the error too, just in case there is one. So we go into the console. So it starts off undefined, undefined. Basically, there's no data yet, but it's also not an error. It's sort of loading. And then we get back a response. And I was unsure, sort of, I was trying to access the body and that was giving me this readable stream and I wasn't quite sure what to do with that. And I sort of knew what the issue was. The issue was fetch, you got to do that weird double promise thing where you first get a response and then you get the JSON from that response. So that's what was tripping me up. So what we can end up doing is we can create a function called fetcher. And what fetcher was is it, it will basically take any args, sort of whatever it gets passed, and it will pass those args to the actual fetch. And then when we have a response, we can take that response and we can get its JSON. I believe that's how it works. So now instead of passing actual fetch there, let's pass our fetcher function. And now let's see what's showing up in this console log. So you can see that it's already better. What we've got is, well, first thing you'll notice is it's actually rendering twice. And that's because the first time it's rendering is the stale data, and now it's revalidating, it's going to fetch the new one. 
So then it gets the new data and it re-renders, and that's why it's rendering twice because of the cache data. But now we have actual data. We have all of those different um, those different uh, crimes that are taking place near wherever this latitude and longitude is. I don't know, somewhere in the UK. And this is for October. Cool. So already we basically have the minimum um, the minimum example working, but let's make it a little bit um, better. We can say if um, an error, we could do return a div that says error. If uh, not data, what we can do is we can return loading. And so if we get to here, we've basically guaranteed that um, we don't have an error and we do have data. So we can now deal with this data. And instead of just rendering SWR, why don't we swap this out for a pre tag and we will stringify the JSON response. So we'll do data uh, null because we don't want a replacer and I'll do spacing of two so it looks a bit nicer. So if we come back, now we're seeing the actual data. So we can see this antisocial behavior. Um, if I do a, a load, you can see it's loading for a sec. And then when it has the data, um, it, it renders it here. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is, it has a little bit to do with the uh, SWR package, but it's something I like to do. And that's basically to split up the fetching of the data from the displaying of that data. And I'm going to build a little thing that allows us to filter the data down by the type of crime that was committed. So what we'll do is we'll define a functional component here. So function, we'll just call it crimes. And we'll basically take um, most of this stuff for now and we'll put it in here. So we really haven't accomplished anything yet, but now we have this app. And what I'm going to be doing is if you're using this use SWR hook a bunch and you don't want to always have to pass your fetcher, your different options and stuff like that, the first thing you can do is you can use this um, SWR config. It's a provider and we can wrap sort of the rest of our app around this to, per to set some sort of global settings for SWR config. So what we'll do here is we will say SWR config and inside of this we will embed our crimes. So what we can do now is we can provide a value to this config and what we'll be just providing is the fetcher. So now I no longer need to provide all the options every time I use the hook. It will basically, because it exists inside of this provider, it will use those global values. So it's still sort of working as expecting. So we can keep going in our um, refactoring of this code. So what I want to do now is I want to break out the displaying of this data, which is just a pre-tag, it's not much, but from the actual fetching of that. So I'm going to create a function called display crimes and it will receive an array of crimes for now. And we can basically take this and remove it down here. So we're no longer working with data, we're working with crimes, and we'll need to return that from this um, function here. So display crimes, it's a self-closing uh, component, and we need to pass down some crimes to it, which is just our data. Cool, it's still working. So let's keep going in the refactoring, and now what I'm going to do is build a way to filter out all of the different categories of crimes. So I'm actually going to pass these categories down. And how do I get them? I've got sort of each category here, antisocial behavior, antisocial behavior, same thing, same thing. What I want is a unique list um, or a set of all the unique values. So we can do that. Um, it's a little bit of a trick, but so we want to pass down an array and we want unique values though. So what we can do is we can take the values from a set that we produce. So a set is just a unique, it's a different object type or data type, but it's, it's like an array, but all the values are unique in it. So 
To get all of the unique values, what we can do is say data and we'll map the data. So each of these is a crime and what we want is the crime dot category. Okay, so if we work backwards, we're taking all of the crimes and we're basically getting an array of all their categories. We're passing that array to a set, which will give us the unique values. And then we're using the triple dot, which will break out this set back into an array, which we're passing down as categories. So now that we have categories, we can start to do something with it. So why don't we just, um, We'll just wrap this around with a, the fragment tag. And we can show a list of all the categories right here. So what we'll do is we will map the categories. And each one is a category. And what we want for each of these is a button. So we always need to provide a key, which will be the category. And the value of this button will also be the category. Like that. Cool. So you can see I've got a unique list of all the, the categories here. Antisocial behavior, bicycle theft, burglary, etc. But we're not really doing anything with it, right? So that's the next step. What we're going to do is we're going to get some state and we're going to have a state property called the filter category. So set filter category. And we'll do react use state and we'll start it off as a null value. It's not being filtered at all. So what we want to do now is when somebody clicks on a button, so on click, we want to set the filter category and it will be set to whatever category we're currently mapping over. Cool. So map the categories, create a button for each one. On click, we'll set that category to be the one that's currently filtered. And what we'll do is we'll give it a way to reset. So if there is a filter category and we will display a button that says reset. And when you click the reset button, what we'll do is we will set filter category back to null. Cool. So once I set one, you can see the reset shows up, disappears, but we have an actually filtered any of the data yet. So that's the last thing we need to do. So why don't we just create a new variable called um, filtered crimes. And let's do a quick check first. We only really need to filter when this has a value. So we can use a ternary here to say, if there's a filter category, what I wanna do is take the crimes and, was it filter or so? Yeah, filter. So we're gonna take each crime and we're going to see if its category is equal to the one currently being filtered like that. And if there isn't a filtered category, well, we can just pass on the crimes, which is the unfiltered list of all the crimes. So now that we have this um, data up here, what we need to do is instead of um, we're just stringifying for now, but instead of stringifying that, we would stringify the filtered crimes rather than uh, the, the, the superset of all the data. So if we come back here, we start off with all the data. We can filter down to bicycle theft, um, criminal damage, drugs, other theft, etc. And you can eat this data is sort of cool. Unable to prosecute suspect under investigation. It gives you sort of the status of each of these crimes, which is sort of cool. Um, in another video, what I'll be doing is mapping all of these out. That's actually why I chose this data set because it has a latitude and a longitude for each one so you can plot them on a map. So stay tuned for that coming up. And we're basically done this example. I wanted to make one further change though. So I'm searching data back in October. Um, I doubt the crimes that happened two months ago are changing very often because it's the past, right? But one thing that this package does is if we're sort of browsing over here and we come back, which come back, it will refetch the data again. And that may be something you want if your data is sort of changing. See, every time I come back, it's, it's refreshed. It's refetching the data if it's over 
um, what is it? I don't know, some sort of timeout that it has. But for this data, we don't really want it to refresh every time. I'm fine showing the sort of older version of that. So there's an option that we can pass, and that is revalidate on focus. So that's when the browser tab gets focused. See, new, new fetch right here. I don't want that on here because my data is not changing. It's pretty cool though, but we can come back and because we're using this global config, what we can actually just do is set a revalidate on focus oops, to false so that every time you sort of come back, um, you can see it's no longer refetching all of the data. So there's a few other options we haven't really played around with. Whether to use suspense or not, that might be a cool another video. Uh, what fetcher we did use that. If you want some initial uh, data to be passed, I don't think you would use that globally because it says here this is per hook. But anyways, take a look at all the different um, config options you can pass to the hook or to the global SWR config provider. So we just go over this again. We built a custom fetcher function which uses fetch and basically it returns a promise which is after it gets the response it converts it to JSON which is also a promise. Um, then what we did is we wrapped a global provider SWR config around our crimes component. Uh, crimes component its job was basically to go and fetch the data handle some error and loading states, and then pass that data on to another component whose job is to just display this data. So it receives the crimes and a unique list of the different categories. We did that using uh, this set trick. And then in here, this is just straight up React. It really has nothing to do with SWR, but we receive the crimes and the categories. We provide a way to filter them, and then we filter out the data sort of prior to being rendered. And then we, we were showing the different um, filters and a way to reset it. And then we're just outputting the data here. Next up would basically be to take this, which is just going in a pre and map it out so that you can see where all these crimes are taking place. Hope you enjoyed this um, video. Check out SWR. It's a really cool package. And I would, I would say I would use this over sort of raw fetch or Axios anytime I was working with um, a RESTful API. I'm not yet sure if I would replace Apollo with this because Apollo provides a ton of uh, nice GraphQL specific things, but you can do um, GraphQL with this. If you're using just a, a library like GraphQL request, you can pass in your GraphQL query, and uh, which is cool. It's an alternative to Apollo, I guess. All right, that's it. Have a good day, everyone. Take care.